Good evening. Welcome to a service of Lessons and Carols here at Kemene Church. Warm welcome to you all. Just a brief housekeeping notice at the start. This evening is a, it contains nine readings and nine carols. In the interest of physical well-being, we will remain seated for the singing of our nine carols. Let us begin with a word of prayer together. Loving God, in this season of Advent, it is our joy to prepare ourselves to hear once more the message of the angels, to go even to Bethlehem and see the Son of God, Jesus, lying in a manger. This night, let us hear and heed in Holy Scripture the story of your loving purpose from the time of our rebellion against you until the glorious redemption that you have won through Jesus Christ. But first, on this night, hear us as we pray for the needs of our whole world. Hear us as we pray for peace and justice upon the earth, for unity and the mission of the church for which Jesus died, especially for his church in Scotland and here in Kemne. And because God particularly loves them, let us this night remember in our prayers the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and those who feel unloved, the aged and the little children, as well as those who do not yet know the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally this night, we give you our thanks for this story of salvation, for the story of the word who became flesh for us. To sum up all of these prayers, all of these petitions, all of these thanksgiving, let us now join together in the words which Jesus himself has taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. May Almighty God bless us this night with his grace. May Christ give us the joys of everlasting life. And to the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of Angels bring us all. Amen. And now I would invite our first reader forward. Reading from Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 15 and 17 to 19. God announces humanity's punishment for rebellion against God, and that the seed of the woman shall bruise the serpent's head. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals you will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. To Adam he said, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. 
It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Thank you, Muriel. We now sing our first carol together, the race that long in darkness pined. Second lesson, Genesis 22, verses 15 to 18. God promises to Abraham that by his descendants all the nations of the earth will obtain blessings. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and not, have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Thank you, Jeff. We now sing our next carol, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
The third lesson is from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, then verse 6 to 7. The prophet announces the birth of a king to a people in darkness. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it on the, with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and for evermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. <clears throat> Thank you, Ishmael. We now sing our next carol, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. <clears throat>
fourth lesson from Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 to the beginning of, of verse 5. The king is coming and will usher in a reign of justice for the poor and peace for all God's creation. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you, are, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor gives birth, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. Thank you, Joyce. We now sing our next carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
The fifth lesson is from Luke chapter 1, <clears throat> verses 26 to 35 and verse 38. The angel Gabriel announces to the Virgin Mary that she will give birth to God's Son, whose kingdom will never end. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Thank you, David. We now sing our next carol, Tell Out My Soul. The sixth lesson is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Against a backdrop of emperors and taxes, Jesus is born. 
In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. We sing together now our next carol, Once in Royal David's City. And the seventh reading is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, reading for verses 8 to 16. The shepherds go to see the Saviour of the world and find him lying in a manger or a forste. Reading from the Doric translation. Now, there was there about some shepherds out in the parks, watching over their sheepies. For an angel the Lord came to them. 
And the Lord's glory was shining all around them. They were terrified. But the angel says to them, Do not be feared. I face good news to you and to other folk. This very day in David's tomb, your Saviour was born, Christ the Lord. And this will be your sign. You'll find the Bernie, whop it up in clutes and lying in a four-star. Ah, teens, there was a muckle kolishangi or the heavenly host singing God's praises. Glory to God in the hechtest heaven and on earth peace, greed will to our folk. After the angels had got a war back to heaven, the shepherds said in to another, Come on, we must hide straight to Bethlehem and find out for ourselves what the Lord has told us about. So away they did at a fair lake and found Mary and Joseph and the wee Bernie lying in the forester. We now sing our next carol in English. <laughs> infant holy, infant lowly. The Eighth Lesson, Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. The wise men follow a star to find the child Jesus, the King of the Jews. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the King, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born King of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, 
The star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. We now sing our next carol together, We Three Kings. Our ninth and final lesson from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. 
In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. And the light is shining in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man who was sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, to all who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of humanity, but born of God. And the word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. And we have seen his glory, glory as the only son of the father, full of grace, full of truth. And we now sing our final carol of this evening, Silent Night, Holy Night. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, give us your grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, this life in which your son Jesus came to visit us in great humility, give us this grace that in the last day, 
when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge living and the dead, we too may rise to life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be upstanding for the benediction. <clears throat> May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon each of you. May he scatter the darkness from before your paths. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may this blessing remain upon each of us and upon all who we love, this night and forevermore. lessons and carols, please do stay on for a cup of hospitality and a fancy piece as well. <laughs>